programming VMS is not a high level job. But identifying the programs you have to write down is a high level job. That is the intellectual thing that you help your company. If you, you follow what I mean. Okay? And it starts by learning at this level, at the lowest level in heading up. You can add tremendous value. Okay? Remember, we, we, we are a young country, we are a very rich country. We have bought huge amounts of assets, huge, huge amounts of assets, you won't believe. Okay? But we have challenges maintaining that. Okay, people are taking advantages of our nicety because we are good, soft people and dumping things on us. Okay? And we are not unable to maintain. It's not because of our culture, it's because the technology is not being passed on properly. Okay? So these are very important things, you know. The cost of BMS uh, compared to the whole rail network, you know the rail network, when they did their RT system. That whole project was 1.2 billion. Okay? Putting the tracks, electrical supply, and all that is 1.2 billion. The scale up portion of that was less than 80 million. You follow what I mean? But the scale up portion is the one that kills the whole system. The trains are running, the tracks are still there, the power supply is there, but the control systems fail because we are unable to maintain that. Okay? If you look at the commuter train, we set up the first commuter train in 1998. Remember, we were rushing for the Commonwealth Games. Not even 20 years, the commuter train stopped running because we couldn't repair the EMUs, the engine management units. Okay. Now, in 2011, they bought a whole new set of trains. Okay. Now it's already four years. We cannot afford to wait for another 20 years and then the thing stop running and then we have to replace them. We cannot every 20 years buy new engines. We have to learn how to maintain it. This is actually very exciting. This is very, very exciting technology. Failover. Okay, I will go through failover. I think in ASCO you all are looking for failover systems. Okay. Failover has got many types of failover. Okay. You got fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means no single failure will cause your systems to fail. Okay. You have dual networks. Intelligent redundancy means you can put switches so that if this communication fails, it will switch to the other one. That is intelligent redundancy. You could have manual redundancy. That means you run there, press a button, it switch to this. You can also do that. Okay. Mirror disk. Merit alarm server. Remember, if your alarm server goes down, that's it. You don't have alarms. Okay, so you can have a backup alarm server. You can have a, a, a backup hard disk. Okay, remember all your alarms are being stopped. Instead of having a backup server, which is costly, you can have a great technology that backs up your logs. Okay. This is a KL central architecture. Okay. You can see there are two redundant servers, the, the, the main servers, they are two. Then they got workstations three. So they are redundant and you got two switches, isn't it? Redundancy works on this. If you have the main controller and you have the secondary controller. Both controllers will operate, both controllers will listen and get inputs. Only one controller takes action. That is known as a primary controller. There is a wire connected between that controller and this guy. The secondary controller will listen to the primary controller. Like I am listening to your heartbeat, tuk tuk, tuk tuk, heartbeat. The heart stops, this will take over automatically. Okay? Most controllers do that. So when you do that, you must you have two controllers, isn't it? So you must pay license for this controller. You must pay license for this controller. This controller will take over and work like this controller, isn't it? So you must pay one more license for doing that. This controller will take over and do this, isn't it? You must pay one more license for that. That's how the vendors sometimes price their license for failover. So for two controllers, you pay four licenses. 
Take this example, what do you see the difference between these two? Both are redundant systems, what is the difference? Interdependencies. High dependency on the network, isn't it? There's only one switch here. Mm. If this switch fails, it's the whole thing goes Single down. line failure there. Yeah. So it's a single point failure. Here you have double network. Double mm. network means when you buy your workstation, you need two NIC cards. When you buy your server, you need two NIC cards. Okay? All that adds to your cost, but then you have redundancy. Now, mostly redundancy is in the master controller because if, if the, the, the real time database goes down, you lose communication, isn't it? Here, this company, you all remember this company? This is Astro. Astro floated a tender last time and they wanted redundancy in the field level controller. Okay? That means not just the primary and master. On the main DDCs, they wanted redundancy. Okay? So they said that because your, your field controller connects to all the terminal and all the other controllers, isn't it? So if this controller goes down, this whole string of controllers will lose communication. So they said, no, I want field level. So this was the architecture we proposed at that time. We waited for this tender, we didn't get this project. So this is the architecture. So we had two RS-485 networks okay, connected to two controllers. This controller will listen to the heartbeat. If one fails, the other guy take over. So all the equipment will stay, con stay connected no, no, no. to the network. No, 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 no. Okay. So again it depends. Astro wanted this because their yeah, server room is very critical. Each server has one station of programs. If the servers go down, they lose a lot of revenue. So they wanted to have extra protection at the field level. So these are actually two DDCs besides the master station. Okay. So you have dual field networks in this case. And also dual management level networks. So the cost all multiplied by two, isn't it? Cost multiplied by two. Failover multiplied by four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for the license. License. When we did this project, this is KL Central. Preventive maintenance. Every six months they will test this. Hmm. So during the first two, three years they will call us. We will go there at midnight. Midnight they will sit here and they will switch. That means they will pull one server down. Switch off the server and see whether the other guy takes over. They mm -hmm. will do this as an active test as part of preventive maintenance every six months. Okay. The first few years they made us be there because they wanted to make sure it works. Then now they stopped doing and now I do not know whether they do. When they did the recent upgrade, I am not sure if they still use the system or they have replaced it. Okay. But they do that every six months. Okay. And they do it at midnight, midnight because there is less interruption to all of the same. Communication and drivers. <coughs> I just finish up this material okay, before we go for the break. Communication and drivers, we have covered most of it. What we want to do now is the OPC. Okay, now what is OPC? Remember I told you that two ways that your controller can communicate with your BMS. One is using Modbus. Modbus is a driver or using BACnet or using Longworks. Okay? Another way is actually for the controller to communicate directly with the SCADA software, with the BMS software. Now,
those days, 15 years ago, if you buy a printer and let's say you write a simple software in your PC, you, you, you write to an Epson printer and then you unplug the Epson, you connect HP printer, funny printer characters will come out. Oh, they ask you to out. Yeah. So because the, the code for the HP printer is different, the code to control the Epson printer is different. So every time you write a software, it's dedicated to the printer. Mm. Then when Windows 19, Windows 98 came in, Microsoft introduced this concept of a standard virtual driver. They said the, the, the software guys, this is my virtual driver. Okay? And the printer guys are here. They say all the software developers you write to the virtual driver and they develop that code, that the standard. And they told the printer guy, you write the interface for your own printers. Mm. So today when you buy printers, this you don't have to worry. If you write a special software, you don't have to worry. You can plug any printer and it will work. Mm. Okay? So when the process industry those days when you have the, 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 the DDC manufacturers, sorry, DDC is here, and then you have the BMS manufacturer, they had the same problem. Okay, you have to write dedicated protocols for each DDC. They found a foundation or organization, they combined and said, let's form a group called OPC Foundation. opcfoundation.org you can go and see on the website and they came out with a standard so they said all BMS guys the software developers write to a virtual driver all DDC guys write to the virtual driver so today if you buy an OPC compliant controller if you buy a PLC OPC compliant they give you this free Okay, if you buy from Siemens, Siemens will give you this free. Okay, that is a real-time database. You follow what I mean? So when you buy SciTech or any different vendor's product, they can directly interface with the controller. Okay? Now the advantage of this is remember just now Modbus, I say you must do the mapping. Remember the Modbus input is 10,001, 10,001, you must map it. Hmm. That is actually very tedious. Okay. But yesterday, remember when I did the HMI software, when I click on the button, I could see the variable name in the controller, that is OPC. Mm. With OPC, I can actually go into the controller and see the variable name. You follow what I mean? Those days, I have a variable name here, I have a variable name there, I must map the variable with Modbus, I must map the variable in not pass and then map it correctly to develop my program. Now with this, I just have to go and take the variable name there and link it directly. That's the advantage of OPC. Okay? So if you buy a controller, we always specify OPC compliant. The programming language for the controller, yesterday I told you IEC 61131-3. Usually we would specify that. So today if you go to the OPC Foundation website, you will see standards for this. Okay? That means they have published standards. They are not free. To access the standard, you must be a member. To be a member is 5,000 US dollars. Okay? But for you, you don't have to worry because you are not developing the software. Okay, so you don't need to go into detail what the standard is. They got a standard for data access. Remember the real-time database? They got a standard for historical. So today you can buy a, a history archive software from this vendor. It will work with your controllers. Standard for alarms and events. They have a standard. Standard for XML and things like that. So there are many standards defined for the industry. Okay. So that's what OPC is. OPC today stands for Open Process Control. 
those days it used to stand for OLE for process control because it was based on Microsoft's OLE standards. Today it's called Open Process Control. So what the OPC, before OPC, if you have a HMI, you to talk to this controller, you got one protocol. Talk to controller B, another protocol. Another protocol, another protocol. Then if you got trending, this guy also must talk. So you see everybody is talking to everybody else. Okay? So when you look at the data here, there are slight differences because they are picking the information at different time. Now it's different. This guy talks to a a middle layer. Okay, this is where the real time database is. This guy talks to the middle layer. This guy picks the information. So this database can be seen by this guy. And they just pick the information. Mm -hmm. And this database is the same database this guy sees. You follow what I mean? So the information this guy has and this guy has comes from the same database. So it will be the same. Mm -hmm. It won't be different. Okay? Some of the controllers have which are diagnostic variables. What you 